Here's one you may have seen a preview of in my last video. I cut the section off the back and used it to make a Lincoln station wagon. And after I was left with the casting, I had the idea that I would turn it into something. So I removed the tempos off the sides, except for on the front fenders. And then I found some of these real rider wheels I had in storage. And I found some bars to go on the back here. And I cut a bed piece from a T2 pickup, Volkswagen pickup, and fashioned that to go in the back. I found an engine for it. And the, this section here that was left from the back end is also going to be the back window. I just realized I could do that a little bit ago. Yeah, I still got to cut the seats down and the windows down the fit. And then we're going to put this Cadillac bumper as an addition to the factory bumper. Make it larger like a truck. I think that will look pretty cool. Also have an option to do this dirt bike as an accessory. And then I have this old Hot Wheel here, which I don't really care for. I think I'm going to cut the bars off the bottom of the chassis and mount them the same way they are here on this 4x4. So we've got a lot of work to do, but I think I've gathered up enough stuff to go ahead and do this build. I wish I had some more accessories to put in the back, but I'll come up with something. Next step, I think we'll go ahead and put a suspension on it and get the wheels mounted to the chassis and what I'm going to use for the axles I use these WD-40 straws I'll cut these down and slice them open and that'll give us our axle for these real riders that'll be our next step after we get the suspension and wheels mounted I'll cut a hole in the hood get this engine in there that'll look good so let's go ahead and we'll take an exacto knife and trim these down to fit in between the wheels very carefully and the hardest part is going to be slicing it open on one side and then snapping it over the rod giving us something to work with so let me readjust the camera and we'll do that next when you cut these you want to cut straight down as much as possible because you, you, you want it to be square if you don't cut it square, it could affect how your wheel rolls. If you have trouble cutting it square, just take some sandpaper or a file and make it square. Okay, looks like this is going to fit in between the wheels. So, The better the fit, the better it's going to roll. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and check, make sure that it fits the other one. Looks like it fits the other one, so I got a template. Go ahead and make two of these just by just by placing them side by side like that. I'll make measure the other one out. Okay, we got those two pieces. Next, you want to make sure you have a very sharp X-Acto blade or razor knife. And you're going to slide it into the tube. And we want to slice only one side of it open. And the way I do that is just by placing it in the tube and then putting it against something square and slowly pushing it until it cuts it open. I'll do that next. All right, I'm going to use this metal pencil sharpener to push against. And I'm just going to gently slide the blade through the straw very slowly, very gently. Slow, steady pressure. Remember, your fingers are in front of this razor blade, so be very careful. Might want to use something bigger than the little block I'm using but it has these little spaces for my finger to grab and I've done this a bunch of times so just be careful or you could cut yourself badly 
All right, I went all the way through one side and I'll be able to pry that open and put it over the axle. To see here, but it's kind of tedious because you only need to cut one side. You only want to cut one side and you don't want to cut yourself. So I've got this one completed. Let's do the other one. Same exact process. Just want to place it right in the hole and it'll hold itself there. Place your knife flat on the table. Get you a block. If you first time doing this, I would use something bigger. A block of wood would be fine. I just didn't want to run down to my shop and grab one, so I'm going to use this today. I've used it before, it works fine. Slow, steady pressure. Very slow, because if it slips, you want to stop. You don't want to jam this blade into your fingers. Almost there. I think that's it. We have this one split the same way. Now they can be placed over the axles. What I usually do now is take an axle pin and put it in here and kind of pry it apart because it's actually it can take a few minutes to get one of these on there. So let me get an axle pin to work with and we'll get this pried open. All right, I got an axle pin. I cut one side off. And I'm going to use that to pry this little straw open. As you can see. I'm going to pry it open. Maybe slide it through here a few times and kind of get it stretched apart some. But what we're going to do is slide it over the other axle pin and it's really tight. Once you get the axle pin in there, you don't have to glue it or anything. It's going to stay on there for good because this is just going to snap right back closed once you're able to actually get it on there. Sometimes you can leave this in as a wedge and it'll keep one side kind of open and then work it onto your wheel. Now if you want to change your axles to a different size, I'm going to leave these the way they are so this is going to go right on here. But if you were going to cut this axle, you could make it any length you want and you wouldn't have to slice this open and just glue the pins inside the holes. I've done that in other videos. If you're confused about that, watch one of my demolition derby videos and it's got that method in each of those. This is time consuming, especially if you haven't done it before. It's tricky to slide that straw over there. I don't know if it's picking it up. You can kind of see I'm starting to get it on there. I got to get it all the way on there. Almost there. Okay, it's in there. It slid right over the pin. Actually, that went on pretty easy. Sometimes it could take even longer. So once you slice the straw and slide it over, you've got your axle on there. You can glue this in place anywhere you want. Maybe take some sandpaper and rough it up a little bit because it is pretty shiny. And then epoxy it in place or super glue it. Okay, we got one ready. I need to do the same thing to this one. Same exact process. I don't want to waste a bunch of time making this a long video so you've seen how I did the first one I'm just going to repeat the same thing we'll come back when I get this one on I definitely recommend taking some sandpaper and roughing these straws up so our epoxy or glue whichever you decide to use I usually use both I'll super glue everything together first and then once it's dry and the way I want it then I'll go back and put epoxy over everything so it's easier to just sand these beforehand because, you know, if you don't, the shiny surface, it is harder for the glue to stick. I went ahead and took a file and sanded the axles so they're ready to go. 
These have been sanded, they're ready to go. Now I want to take a pair of pliers and crimp the end of these. About, about an eighth of an inch. Definitely no more than an eighth of an inch. You could probably go a little less maybe. And I don't know, I guess about a 35 degree angle. I'm going to crimp it and bend it a little bit. So you can see how, I guess you can see how I did that. Just took the plier, crimped it, and bent it a little bit. I'm going to do two to start out with the same way. Crimp, bend about 35 degree angle. Okay, once you got your two pieces bent, you're going to take and glue them on on the axle close to the wheel. But you don't want it to touch the wheel. You don't want to glue it to the wheel. So we're going to glue these on here. We'll do. We'll have a total of four of these bent and ready to go, and we'll do two on each wheel. And then once the glue's dry, we can trim the access off to the size we want. So once you glue them on there, you want to make them as straight as you can, and you don't want to you don't want any extra coming off where you crimped it. If you crimped it and you see extra on the axle, go ahead and trim that little bit off where you get started, because you want a nice flush fit on the axle. But once you glue it and get everything square, it's going to look like that. And then we'll trim them down later. So I'm going to go ahead and get some glue and glue these on. All right, won't take much glue. I recommend that you use the gel type glue. If you use the other style, it usually just runs off. So just a dab. And then apply it on the axle. Hold it for a little while right where you want it doesn't hurt to set it down on the table because you want this to be square I do one at a time when this one's dry we'll come back and do the other one all right we'll glue it down just a little dab of glue is all you need. You want to place it on there square. I got the other one set up already. Try to make sure they're even. Try to make sure that they're evenly spaced. Especially next to your wheel. This one looks pretty good. We'll let that dry and then we'll go back and do the other side. Just like before, one dab of glue. Place it close to the wheel, but no, don't want to touch it. Need a little bit of room for some play. The wheels like to wobble around a little bit, so you don't want them to get too close. These sit for about 10 or 15 minutes before we do anything else. All right, while some of those suspension pieces are drying, I'm going to take this piece that was left over from the T2 Volkswagen bed, and I've already placed it. It just happens to fit there perfectly. We'll glue that in and give it a back window and close up that hole. So let's start with that. I'm going to just go ahead and apply the glue right here on the body for this. The glue's there, not in the hole. Don't want to use too much glue, it'll take forever to dry, so just a small amount. Place it in there. Alright, we got a back window, kind of matches the bed. Two little nubs on there, kind of looks like they could be lights. Let me try to get something on there for, for some kind of lights. All right, so yeah, that piece don't look bad. Let's move on to something else. I adjusted it just a little bit to fit the contour of the roof line, how it kind of slants back. And then I put some glue on the bottom and some uh, baking soda, make sure it stays in there. So we got that. I'm going to paint this all flat black, probably. OK, 
Okay. Next step, we'll probably go back to doing our suspension if those pieces are dry. All right, the next step is a little bit of a guessing game. I'm just going to lay the chassis upside down. That's the back end I'm going to start with. We're going to estimate the middle of the car, but we want to have some height to our suspension, so we want to go a little bit past the middle. We want to make it a little bit more than we need, and then we'll just trim it off. So I'm going to go one-third past the middle, is my estimation, and trim these off, and then see how it places. I, I think that's almost 100% sure that's too much. But that's fine. We want to I'd rather have too much than not enough. So our first cut will have it a little bit too big, probably. So I got it marked. We'll go ahead and trim these off with our razor knife. Or you don't have to use the razor knife. You could use one of these. You could use a snipper like this if you want. It might put less strain on your glue that you just did to do it this way. Okay, so we got that trim. We're going to bring it up some, so as we bring it up, the bars do come closer to the middle, but we're not going to come up quite that high. So we're going to play with it and figure out how high you want it. Take a little bit off at a time till you get the desired height. I'm going to start by taking off probably, looks like about an eighth of an inch. There's a little mark there on the chassis. I'm going to go with that mark that's on the chassis and trim these again and see if that gets me closer to where I want to be. That's closer, but still a little bit more, probably about the same amount. this again yeah say about an eighth of an inch off of there well I think I got one side longer than the other you don't want that I think that's pretty good. Alright, let's get the other one trimmed as well. Alright, normally I just glue these in place and put a shim on it underneath it to hold it up. But I'm thinking about trying something different today. I've been thinking about this for a long time. I think I'm going to do is take a drill and drill holes in the chassis at the angle that I want and then slide these red straws into those holes to hold it where I want it. So I'm going to go get my drill and bits and let's try something new. That will be a much better, more permanent fit if I can pull that off. The reason I haven't done this before with the drilling holes in the chassis is I was always afraid of doing it by freehand and not getting the correct angle, but you don't you know you don't get anywhere if you don't if you're afraid of making mistakes so I'm not afraid to make a mistake I'm gonna go ahead and make it work even if we do make a mistake so
All right, I've already got this placed. You see how it's going to be. Looks kind of sloppy right now because of the baking soda, but we're going to paint that all out later. This is just sitting in place how it's going to go. I'm going to go ahead and remove it and apply some glue to those areas. Looks like I think my glue is trying to dry out. All right. Once you like I say, this is the first time I've done it this way, so I'm not quite sure what our result's going to be, but so far, so good. We'll make sure everything's square as possible, and then just let it dry this way. Once we make sure it's square and dry, then we'll move on to the front piece. But that's how the back's going to be. The front will be the same way, essentially, but we want to let this dry. All right, we're ready to glue our front axle in. Apply some glue into these holes we drilled. I placed it once already to make sure it was going to fit. sure we let it as you see what we got here we'll have to let that dry you want to make sure everything's nice and square before it's dry it'd be easier for me to adjust this off camera to make sure it's square but once I make sure it's square I'm going to set it down and let it dry for a little while all right I got the axles glued in front and back it seems to sit and roll nicely very nice we'll get the body on there so you can take a peek on how it's turning out so far okay we got the body on there very cool all right i guess we'll move on to doing Probably the hole in the hood next. Guess we'll get ready and drill the holes out and then file it square and try to get the engine into place. As I was sitting here looking at it, I'm thinking about painting the body flat black and taking an artist brush and painting around these flames and keeping the flames. Maybe get rid of this yellow. That's what I'm pondering on. All right, I have the engine placed. Hold it there with my thumb. I'm going to take the Sharpie and kind of mark the back where I don't want to go back any further than that when I drill the holes. I think I'm going to drill two holes in here and then just take a file and make it square. That's worked very well in the past. So I'll start by drilling out those two holes. All right, I got the engine in here. I took a lot of filing, as you may be able to tell by all the dust on the table. It took me a good while to get that hole big enough for the engine to fit through there. And then I also had to take the Dremel tool and excavate some of the chassis area so that it would fit. So it fits. It looks pretty good. You can see the pipes coming out by the wheels a little bit. I wish they were longer, but they still look pretty good. Let's see, what will be our next step? I think our next step would probably be to get the interior fitted. I need to cut the seats down so they fit in there. And I think that's what we'll do next.
Everything's got one coat of paint. I painted the interior green. It's going to need another coat. Everything's going to take two or three coats. No. The only reason I painted this with a, with a uh, paintbrush was because I wanted to try to save the flames. I'm still not really sure if I'm happy with that or not. But I think it's going to be fine. I'm tempted to just paint over the flames on the fenders. But we'll see. After I put another coat on it, a couple of coats, and then I'm going to spray a, a satin finish over the whole thing when I'm done. That way it will protect the paint some. So let's go ahead and put it, I'll go ahead and put a second coat on, but I won't film all that. I didn't record it, but all I did was took a utility knife and sliced the seats right in the middle, straight across. And they fit in there, and then I took the bottom and put it on a sander and sanded it down some so the windshield would fit properly. So it fits in there good. All right, since we are waiting on paint to dry, I think this would be a good time to go ahead and install the Cadillac 59 Cadillac front bumper. Apply some glue. I put just a couple of dabs of glue where it's going to make contact. And we're going to just hold it there in place. Make sure it's nice and square. Interesting. Still not sure how it's going to look. It might be a little too much, but I like the idea of it. So we're going to give it a go. Make sure we get it just right. All right, we'll let that dry. Let the paint dry, and then we'll continue with assembly. To paint the chassis and the red suspension parts, this pavement, it's called pavement, is the name of the color. It's a gray color, so I'm going to go ahead and paint this all out gray. And then once I get it painted, we'll continue with the assembly. Here's what it looks like with the gray color on there. Still waiting on paint to dry. I'll probably put a spray finish over the body of satin before we continue on so I don't mess anything up on it. The flat black is very touchy until you put a finish over it of some type. So that's what we're waiting for. I have decided to add some rails to the sides of the beds. I'm going to use some matchsticks. I took a utility knife and I put a little notch at the top on both of these so it kind of fits around the bars in the back there. Very simple. Well, I'm going to probably paint these black. Only thing left to do is glue them on and trim, trim them both to be the same size. And uh, we'll get we'll get that done too. All right. I already applied the glue. Passenger side one is installed. And do the same with the driver's side. Ta da! Alright. Nice fit. Gives it a little bit more of a box in the back, which I like. We'll let that dry for a few minutes and then we'll do a little bit of painting to blend it in. Yeah, I, at first wasn't going to do the rails. I kept thinking maybe I shouldn't but now that they're on there I like how it looks I really do I think that really adds to it and then I'm going to mount this piece on there yeah I like that better I do I think that was the way to go all right we're moving along
All right, we got two halves. One side is nice and smooth and flat. Now that's the side we'll use to glue, glue it down with. Yeah, I think those are gonna look good on there. I want those bars to stick nicely, so I'm gonna take this utility knife, make sure everything's smooth, and get rid of this chrome. It will stick better to the roll plastic than the chrome. Same thing if you're ever building a model car. When you go to put any chrome pieces on a model car, wherever you're going to apply glue, you should sand that chrome off. Chrome's so shiny, the glue just doesn't want to stick very well. Okay, that's ready. Put some glue on there, and we'll glue these on. And we'll probably paint these. I'm not going to keep these yellow. I think I'm going to paint them the same pavement gray that I used on the bottom. Pretty sure. All right, let's get some glue and put these on here. Bars now they're yellow. Just glue the windshield in. I put just a dab of glue on there, dropped it in. I'm gonna let it sit for a moment. I went ahead and I put the interior in. I put a couple of dabs of glue and sprinkled the baking soda over it. Um, I showed that in some other videos if you haven't seen it before. It just makes the glue dry faster and gives it a really strong bond. Uh, let this sit for a moment and then dust it off and we'll move on. Okay, the interior is permanently in there and the windshield. I'll have to clean this body off a little bit when we're finished. That uh, baking soda kind of clings to everything but it uh, it'll rinse right off. All right, I got the engine in there, ready to mate the body and chassis together. I think we got the engine in a good spot. I want to be able to see those pipes right in the wheel well. Okay, great. All we really need to do now is paint in all the headlights and the tail lights look for any touch-ups clean the wheels off I think I'm gonna leave this clean I thought about weathering it and making it look dirty muddy which we might do in another video this one's getting kind of long if you think I should weather it and make it dirty say so in the comments and um, if I get enough support, maybe I'll go ahead and make it look real dirty or something. Okay, let's uh, do this little bit of details and almost call this one finished. Sure does roll nice. All the little details finished. Got the headlights painted in, the taillights painted in. I took a black wash and put on the chrome to dull it down a little bit. I did that on the wheels and the grill. I think it looks much better, looks a little dirtier, a little oily looking. 
at the tail lights and stuff. I wish I could have done a little bit better on the the white. I see that one's a little crooked. Looks a little needs a little touch up there. The headlights looks like they need a little touch up too. But the video is getting so long. I'll try to do those little touch up spots before I take any more photos for Instagram or anything. But it turned out really nice. It rolls great. It's got suspension all the way around, front and back, which is really cool. I really appreciate everyone taking the time to watch. I hope you enjoyed. If you decide to make one of your own, send me some pictures and I'll give you a shout out here and on Instagram. Don't forget to check out my eBay store. There's lots of great stuff in there if you feel like making a contribution to the channel or if you just want to put something new in your collection. This sums up our 1970 Chevrolet. Chevrolet. I think I'm going to call this one the Chevrolet. Chevelle and El Dorado since we got the El Dorado grill. Chevelle Dorado, that's what we'll call it, the Chevelle Dorado build. Next time I get some video of this, I'll try to get it outside and get this thing off road and get these little touch ups done too. I'm in the middle of moving right now, so I'm getting slow at making the videos because I got so many other things going on. But as soon as I get settled into the new place, I'll start making videos daily again. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope everyone stays safe and healthy. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. And I'll be talking to you soon.